Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to replace some naughty foods with some gut friendly foods. You may want to have your project plan in hand for this one and your food strategies guide. Now remember, garbage in, garbage out. You must put quality ingredients in your body in order for it to express health and to recover from illness. Your body is just like a car. Imagine if you put raw sewage into your car's gas tank. And it sounds silly, I know, but you get the idea. We can't expect to have health and recovery if we keep poisoning ourselves. And don't let marketing fool you. It fooled us all for decades. All natural, natural ingredients, heart smart, these are all lies. We must turn and stay turned towards organic foods. One favor the United States government has done for us is that it has established guidelines and standards for what qualifies as organic. Organic food is food grown free from chemicals added to the soil or sprayed on to fight pests. Understand that chemicals are added to soil and sprayed on these things in order to grow more crops and thus make more money. Industrial farming corporations pay big money in order to push the boundaries of what is safe for human consumption. And it's sad to say that we can be sure that many things get under the radar, you know, much to the delight of profit-driven food manufacturers and growers. So let's look at the damage that pesticides do to the human physically and emotionally. Please note, you have three to four pounds of healthy bacteria in your intestines. They are supposed to be there. They are your friends. They represent a balanced ecosystem that keeps us alive and healthy. Without them, we would quickly die. These bacteria create things necessary for our immune function and mental health. Just a couple critical things they produce are B vitamins and neurotransmitters. B vitamins make so many healthy things happen in our body that we couldn't live five minutes without them. Neurotransmitters are things that control our emotions like dopamine and serotonin. These prevent some symptoms of indigestion, slow bowels, anxiety, depression, insomnia, and ADD and more. See what I mean? Anti-anxiety? Don't you want these critical bacteria on your side? Should you poison them with pesticide that wipes them out? Of course not. If you want natural, physical, and mental health, we have to be smarter. We have to draw a line in the sand and say no more. No one will protect us but us. Big words, I know it's not that easy. Even if you go to a five-star restaurant, they still serve food that is coated with pesticides. You will find as we move throughout this course that your interest in eating out will dwindle. I encourage as many family meals served at home as possible. It creates healthy families in more ways than one. Go shopping for organic foods together. Even better, if you want to pamper your bacteria, feed them fiber. Just like we need houses to live in the bacteria, they need fiber. They eat it and need it to survive. Fiber comes from root vegetables that grow in the ground. Potatoes, sweet potato, beets, carrots, onions, and any vegetable that has to be pulled out of the ground is a source of fiber. An easy source is hummus and celery. Organic hummus, organic celery, eaten regularly. Note, long-term gut health requires daily fiber. There is no substitute. Fermented foods like sauerkraut, kefir, and kombucha can be helpful at keeping your bacteria populated and healthy too. Give them a try. So, be sure to replace those ordinary pesticide-laden fruits and vegetables with nice, clean, organic sources. And be aware of local produce. Unless you know for sure it is 100% organic, getting the USDA organic stamp of approval is expensive, and most small growers don't spend the money to get certified as organic. Let's talk about genetically modified foods. They're bad news. A genetically modified food is engineered to look, feel, and behave a certain way. In addition, genetically modified often translates as meaning resistant to heavy-duty pesticides. These modified plants are engineered to be able to be soaked with pesticide in order to give them higher yields and higher profits. Let's follow the money. Look at an ordinary banana versus a true organic banana. The ordinary banana is huge has thick, tough skin and lasts for weeks, while the organic banana is much smaller, has thin skin and is usually browned in the store. Now taste each one. 
you'll find that the ordinary GMO banana has much less taste than the organic banana, which also makes you feel better after you eat it, the organic one. So replace ordinary produce with non-GMO. It has vastly more nutrients as well. It is tough to get the nutrients we need even from clean organic soil. I have to recommend a quality daily phyto multivitamin. This type of vitamin gives you what you need and actually gets into your body tissues instead of just passing through your system, undigested. The project plant has a nice source. Low inflammatory lifestyles are the best lifestyle. GMO foods are seen as a foreign invader to the immune system, which creates inflammation and robs you of your health. See how important it is to permanently replace inorganic GMO foods with foods stamped organic. It's hard to control what you get when you eat out. Just exercise the power you have to control what comes into your home and, end up, and ends up on your plate. So now on the carbohydrates. They can be your best friend or worst enemy. Carbohydrate just means a chain of sugars. So imagine a chain like a pet leash. Your saliva starts breaking down these um, right in your mouth just as you're chewing and they're quickly and easily absorbed into our blood in the intestines. You ever heard of a blood sugar spike? How about a blood sugar crash? Carbs act fast, they're absorbed quickly. They can be a quick source of energy when the body needs it most. They're not our enemies, but they can be misused. Simple processed carbs spike, then crash our blood sugar. It's just like throwing a cup of gas on a fire. It flames up quickly, but goes down quick too. That up and down, up and down causes something so common and severe that it is amazing that sugar isn't regulated as a drug. And that thing is diabetes. Diabetes simply means that there has been too high of levels of sugar at moments in the body and that the brain has decided to make cells that are resistant to it, that are resistant to sugar entering them and damaging them. That's why diabetes is also known as insulin resistance, since insulin allows sugar to enter our cells. Too much sugar in a cell causes them to explode. Just imagine eating an entire bag of sugar. It sounds silly, but something bad would definitely happen, right? Diabetes is actually a normal response to abnormal amounts of blood sugar over time. Furthermore, the stress hormone cortisol comes into play when the blood sugar is imbalanced. Ever heard of cortisol, also known as the stress hormone that creates stubborn belly fat and disrupts sleep? Don't awaken this monster. Cortisol is released by the adrenal glands during crisis and chronic stress. We will show you how to accurately measure it in order to see if you have what they call adrenal fatigue, which plagues millions and goes undiagnosed most of the time. So what to do? Replace simple carbs with complex carbs. Complex carbs break down slow and steady. They keep your blood sugar stable and this creates a wonderful environment for peace, balance, and low inflammation in the body. Low inflammation equals longevity and health, and of course, a healthy gut. So replace that gas station breakfast, that vending machine lunch, and that drive through dinner with a balanced meal, including complex carbohydrates instead. What you can expect is steady energy, good mood, good sleep, less stubborn weight, less inflammation, and better physical looks. Great sources of complex carbs are quinoa, brown rice, sweet potatoes, and beans. Always go organic, of course. These complex carbs can and must be used for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can add quinoa to anything. Brown rice complements any meal. Many people use a half to one cup of complex carbs at each meal. Cook up a big pot of a few of them for easy access each week. They last for seven days or more in the fridge. Get on the complex carb train today. Also for that sweet tooth, help yourself to any berry, such as blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, or raspberries, as well as Granny Smith green apples. These don't spike blood sugar. Replace those big fruit plates with these quality organic fruits. Oh, and salt is easy. Just use it reasonably. Use sea salt or Himalayan rock salt instead of ordinary hypertension producing table salt. Bring it with you when you eat out. Now, for those with known blood sugar issues or high A1C, a marker for diabetes, consider employing a little help from a little known supplement called Metaglycemex. 
It helps to encourage the brain to make normal cells that have normal amounts of insulin receptors. Remember, diabetes is insulin resistance due to high blood sugar. Adding complex carbohydrates to the diet using metaglycemex can help to quickly reduce the A1C marker down to a safe level that should be checked every 90 days until it is normalized. And now fat. Friend, enemy, both, neither. Confusing, isn't it? The truth is fats are healthy and necessary, but don't ask the scientists that performed the Framingham study. The Framingham study was performed in the late 20th century and came up with the idea that animal fats are all bad and make you fat. This study caused science to get involved in food. They decided to remove all animal fats and to replace them with human engineered oils made from vegetables. Palm oil, soybean oil, hydrogenated oil, corn oil, canola oil, Crisco, and many, many more by many, many names are now your sworn enemies, created by misinformed engineers. These engineers figured they were saving humanity. They were dead wrong. The oils they created actually cling to arteries, causing inflammation and creating disease. On the contrary, healthy natural fats lower inflammation. They help us lose weight. They keep our brains healthy. They balance cortisol. They keep our arteries clean. So replace bad vegetable oils with natural fats like avocado, raw nuts, nut butters, olive oil, wild caught fish, and the mighty, mighty coconut oil. Coconut oil is the only oil that is actually safe to cook with. Heating man-made vegetable oils turns them into straight poison. Replace bad fats with healthy fats. Lower your inflammation and empower your intestines to live and function at their peak levels. Dairy is another hot item of contention. Cows don't drink milk. We started drinking it in order to stay alive throughout human history. If you aren't starving to death, we suggest avoiding it in most cases. Oftentimes, it is not the dairy that's bad, it's what's in it. You must go antibiotic and hormone-free, grass-fed dairy if you're going to have it at all. Hormones and antibiotics are injected into cows that are fed grains. The cheap, non-organic grains cause inflammation and sickness in the cow so bad that they must give it antibiotics in order to stay alive long enough for the hormones that they also inject in it to work to grow the biggest cow possible as fast as possible before it dies. Sad, right? Well, understand that dairy is indigestible by 75% of people. A food sensitivity test can give you clear information about the reality of your sensitivity. Get tested if you haven't been. If you do have dairy, consider taking the enzyme lactase along with it. Again, 75% of people don't produce this enzyme necessary for its breakdown. As a rule, dairy-free lifestyles are lower inflammation lifestyles. The gut hates low-grade dairy, so replace that cheap plastic jug of milk with hormone-free, antibiotic-free, grass-fed dairy. Same goes for meat, chicken, turkey, beef, pork. All these should be organic, free range, and grass-fed when possible. The grass-fed part is crucial. Replace ordinary poisonous meat with a truly clean source. And now into water. You and the earth are made of 70% water. Water is the vehicle that moves good things into your body and takes bad things away. Chronic inflammation and chronic dehydration equal poor health, plain and simple. Here's the problem. Our water has been polluted. It contains poisons such as toxic metals and even possesses medications in them. Medications. Can you believe it? <laughs> Basically, anything that has been thrown out is now found in our public water. So what to do? Simple concept of washing your water before you drink it should be shared with everybody. And it sounds silly, right? The idea of telling people to wash their water. But the thing to do is to use things like reverse osmosis filter, even just a plain charcoal filter from a reusable water pitcher you fill up. Water softeners can be installed in homes and help to lower the toxins absorbed in through the skin, which is your largest absorption organ. Treat yourself and your family to one. I'm telling you, they last for decades and drink half your body weight in ounces of clean water daily. Be sure to drink more if you're exercising or sweating in a hot climate. Avoid those plastic bottles, but if you must, drink from them, choose spring water, and take it with you in a BPA-free container. Now think about your gut and how it breaks down your food into liquid which you absorb. 
Think it's important to have enough fluid to make this intricate system work properly? Restoring a gut takes time and water. I'm going to repeat that. Restoring a gut takes time and water. Remember your why as you fill up your BPA-free jug at your house and head out for the day. Remember that toxic water in poison plastic bottles for ultra clean filtered spring water, which is the best approach. Artificial sweeteners, I gotta say, avoid them. They kill your brain, they cause diabetes, they're created in order to pre replace sugar, help and help people lose weight, but they just cause inflammation and they're addictive. Artificial sweeteners are the scourge. Switch to stevia instead, it's a root. It's not uh, sugar, it doesn't spike blood sugar and you can use it to bake. Replacing poisonous foods, it's a chore and it's a habit that must be in place for life. It's hard enough, you know, just please know that breaking down food properly is just as critical. Chronic stress can cause our body to stop making digestive enzymes that break our food down into easily absorbable particles, friendly to the gut. Food that's not broken down properly can lead to acid reflux, bloating, gas, fatigue, and eventually autoimmune disease. Many people who use antacids unfortunately end up developing autoimmune disease. Replace an insufficiency of crucial levels of digestive enzymes with natural enzymes like pineapple and papaya eaten at the end of meals. This will help to ensure a complete breakdown of food. If you need some extra help, a fantastic enzyme called Spectrozyme Complete taken following a full meal is a game changer for many people who are struggling to digest their food properly. Understand that acid reflux is often due to an insufficiency of digestive enzymes in the acid in the stomach, which causes the acid to bubble up the throat as the stomach works extra hard to break down food while lacking what it needs to do so. Check the project plan for Spectrozyme Complete. It works for many people. And treat yourself to a pineapple or papaya dessert sweetened with stevia following full meals. Have acid issues, bloating, gas after meals, or just think something is up with your gut? A GI map test may give you answers, and a food sensitivity test can tell you which way to go. Try the natural approach first, but if you get stuck, science can bail you out with testing. Check the program guide and the project plan for the right source of these specialty tests you won't find in an ordinary doctor's office. It's crucial. Well, that was a lot. Implement the replace approach and watch what happens. Keep going through this module over and over again to get down these key concepts that can help your gut get and stay healthy. Let's keep going.